All right, accrued interest. So when you buy bonds between interest payment dates and pay accrued interest to the seller, this interest is taxable to the seller. So now you've got accrued interest, interest that has compiled up between the payment dates. Again, this is somewhat of an unusual situation because a lot of times most people buying and selling bonds are probably buying and selling bonds in the format of mutual funds or ETFs. Uh, in which case you have possibly a little bit different structure than if you were buying individual bonds, for example. So, but uh, if you receive a form 1099 for interest as a purchaser of a bond with accrued interest, follow the rules earlier under nominees to see how to report the accrued interest, but identify the amount to be subtracted as accrued interest. So again, you might have to then report the amount on the 1099 and then re reduce the accrued interest amount possibly, which means you would follow the same kind of concept of reporting the amount on the 1099 and subtracting the amount, giving the IRS the rationale as to why. Original issue discount, OID. If you are reporting uh, OID in an amount less than the amount shown in box one or box eight of form 1099 OIG, follow uh, the rules earlier under nominees to see how to report the OID but identify the amount to be subtracted as OID adjustment. Similar concept here, somewhat of an unusual situation as well. However, if the payer reported to you a net amount of OID on the bond, reflecting the offset of the gross amount of OID by any acquisition premium, no reduction of the amount of OID income reported to you by the payer may be needed on Schedule B for the bond. So amortizable bond premium. Again, somewhat of an unusual type of situation for the same rationale that we talked about before because many people that don't invest, you know, normal investors um, might be investing in bonds through the format of like mutual funds and ETFs, which means you might not have the same kind of issue. So if you elect to reduce your interest income on a taxable bond by the amount of taxable amortizable bond premium, follow the rules earlier under the nominees to see how to report the interest, but identify the amount to be subtracted as ABP adjustment. So again, you're telling the IRS, this is what I'm doing and why this is what ties into the 1099, here's my adjustment. However, if the payer reported to you a net amount of interest income on the bond, reflecting the offset of the gross amount of interest income by the amortizable bond premium, no reduction of the amount of interest income reported to you by the payer is needed on Schedule B for the bond.